Hello, welcome to this Ned Davis Research video where we will help you see the signals. My name is Brian Sanborn, NDR's Global Head of Investment Solutions. In this episode, we will be speaking with NDR's Chief Economist, Alejandro Gradal. In a recent research note, Alejandro contrasted the economic divergence between China and India. Alejandro, can you describe how the world's two largest emerging economies appear to be going in different directions? for having me, Brian. I would love to talk about it. So first, if we look at a near-term perspective, China's economy really has been slowing. It had a super short-lived pandemic reopening rebound at the beginning of the year. Um, recall that was the end of their zero COVID policy. But if you look now, growth has been a little more state-led. Um, a lot of the fiscal support has been targeted to that area. And unfortunately, if you look at a lot of measures of sentiment, it just appears to be perpetually lower due to the pandemic, as well as the fact that the real estate market just continues to deteriorate. Um, we do think that China is likely to reach the government's growth goal of 5% this year, but because of these factors I mentioned, an overreach is just highly improbable, which is actually a view we've had for quite some time. On the other hand, Brian, you mentioned India, we're actually seeing broad-based gains in economic activity. Loans are growing at the fastest pace in over a decade. If you look at measures of business sentiment, many of them are hovering around record highs. Also, targeted government support has allowed the manufacturing sector to grow quite robustly, which has been quite different from what we've been seeing in the rest of the world. In fact, we think India's economic growth will very likely outpace China's this year for a third year in a row. And Alejandra, NDR's non-US equity allocation model portfolio, which is used within the Day Hagen NDR Smart Sector International Equity ETF, is in line with that view. As of the beginning of November, the model had an overweight position on India and was underweight China. So let's turn to the longer term outlook are you seeing a similar relative advantage for India over China? So it's a very interesting question and people ask us this all the time. And, you know, I think one thing that often points out is the similarity between the two economies is that they pretty much have about the same population size, but China's economy is five times larger than India's. But if you look at China's long-term growth potential, so this is looking at labor force and productivity trends, it's actually been going lower for quite some time. It's about half of what it was a decade ago. And unfortunately, China's demographic outlook is fading and productivity is just being held down by numerous factors. This includes its extraordinarily high debt, um, as well as some of the deglobalization trends we've been seeing. On the other hand, India's demographic outlook is extremely favorable. And because it's so much smaller than China, um, its economy just has quite a bit of room for economic catch up. And fortunately, reforms that were introduced prior to the pandemic, as well as some of these deglobalization trends away from China that I mentioned, should benefit India's long term growth potential. Now, I do want to point out that despite this relatively more favorable economic outlook in the long term for India over China, many people coining India to be the next China. So to be able to recreate that boom um, that China had over the past few decades, I still think India has quite a bit to do before it can unleash its full economic potential. So what challenges may prevent India from reaching its long term potential? Well, so, yeah, there's quite a few of them. Um, one that I point out, given my background and love for demographics, is while India has a large and growing working age population, its female labor force participation rate is actually one of the lowest in the world, and it's about a third of China, so big difference there. So ultimately, this means that India is just vastly underutilizing its full economic potential. And then unfortunately, the ILO, so this is the International Labor Organization, it projects that labor force participation rate will be even lower by the end of this decade. And so we've actually calculated just sort of a back of the envelope estimate that if India's female participation were to rise to China's level, economic growth in India could be about 40% larger. Um, so just something to keep in mind. 
Um, also, despite India's progress with, with reforms, it's still not that easy of a place to do business. I mean, it's much easier than it was before, but it's still not that easy. Um, this table shows that the World Bank's ease of doing business rank um, for select set, set of economies shows that India has a rank of 63, um, which is, you know, one of the hardest to do business in in the G20 and actually compares to a rank of 31 for China and a really great rank of five for South Korea. So compared to other emerging markets, it's just still not an easy place to do business. Alejandra, thank you for your insights. NDR clients can read Alejandra's research notes in her weekly global economic focus publication. The indicators Alejandra and the research team develop for our subscription service are also used in our model portfolios, which are available for direct delivery, on TAMPS, and as well as through ETFs. For more information on NDR, we encourage you to visit the following pages. Thank you for joining us as we help you to see the signals. So long.